So whose kit are we evaluating today? Skinny Medic. Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. In this week's video, we are evaluating Skinny Medic's Civilian Medical Trauma Kit. All jokes aside, this week we are doing a full walkthrough and review of the Civilian Medical Trauma Kit. Now this kit was put together by Skinny Medic. If you don't know who Skinny Medic is, he runs a YouTube channel, has actually been doing it a lot longer than I have. He is a SWAT paramedic, paramedic with a lot of experience. Um, and he also owns a medical equipment store, uh, Medical Gear Outfitters. I do have an affiliate link with them. Skinny Medic and I have had a rivalry for forever. He put out a hit piece on me not too long ago, but you know, we've, we've gotten over it mostly, uh, and now we kind of intermittently co-host his podcast. So this kit here was put together by him. So what's kind of cool about this kit is you actually have a choice of two different bags. So you can get the VanQuest gear. I think this is the five by eight pouch, or you can get it with a Maxpedition IFAC pouch as well, depending on what your preference is. So it comes in a variety of colors, and I believe the cost between the two models is the same, and everything that's in it is exactly the same. So in front of you, I have the VanQuest 5x8 pouch. I really don't have a ton of experience with VanQuest products. I know a lot of people swear by them. This seems like a heavy-duty kit. Uh, on the outside, what I really like is you have this uh, hook swath there, and we can get rid of this patch here. We don't really need that. Um, and here you can put morale patches, whatever you want, identification for the med kit or, you know, a skinny medic or a prep medic patch. Uh, you can also molly things into this. So if you wanted to carry multiple cat tourniquets, say, you could mount a couple different holders on here, probably two. Uh, have one on either side if you really wanted to turn this more into an active shooter response kit. Uh, it would work just fine. So you've got a cat tourniquet on the outside. Now, these all come in the wrapper, um, and this comes stocked and loaded like you see here. But once you get a tourniquet, I would advise that you take it out of the wrapping first thing. Uh, this is going to take valuable seconds to undo it, and I'm trying to do it without making too much noise for the mic, which is why it's taking me even longer. But get this out of the wrapper. You can throw away the instructions because if you're carrying this, you should know how to work it. Um, and on the side, you've got these two elastic bands. It just fits into that's not going anywhere. You also have a Sharpie right there as well. On the other side, you have trauma shears. Um, so this is a pretty cheap run of the mill pair of trauma shears. I always upgrade my stuff. I carry uh, X shears. I also carry the Leatherman Raptor and a couple different rolls. Um, so I would advise getting something that's gonna last you a little bit longer. This will work for like one use, but if you're a professional rescuer, if you plan to be going into this with any regular regularity, I'd get something that's gonna withstand a couple uses. Get those tags off. Those come from Vanquist, just tells you what it's made out of. It is made out of uh, Cordura nylon, and like I said, it's really sturdy. So on the back, you have um, these loops here. Now what you can do is you can take a malice clip, uh, or two malice clips, you can put it through here, and you could molly this, uh, molly this onto a plate carrier or a belt if you so chose. Um, form factor-wise, I think it would work fine for that. You could put that at the front. Um, and use it to pull. You also have these guys here, and I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure what the thought is behind these. These all come out, they're like wire uh, connectors, so you could use this to lash various things, put uh, carabiners on them, you name it. And then you could also hang the kit from this right here. So there's a lot of different carry options for this kit. Uh, so in the front, there's this cool little pocket um, in here, and it will actually Velcro shut. So that's multifaceted. Number one, it holds your PPE, so your gloves. Um, it's a good thing to have just on the outside of the kit. You can throw these on. Just know is that if you can't put these on, you have intact skin. Your skin is actually a great barrier for disease. Just make sure you're washing your hands. I'm not recommending you do that. PP is the best practice, but you probably won't catch anything if you don't have any cuts on your hand dealing with a run-of-the-mill patient. The other nice thing this pocket does is I can come in here and if I'm mollying something, I can reach in and kind of guide that strap as I weave it through. Um, it just makes it a little, little bit easier than having an inaccessible panel there. So coming into the kit itself. Uh, in here, on the lid of the pack, 
you have this bungee system. Now this is really cool because this allows you to kind of customize this in any way you want. Um, you have down here the shock cord that you can adjust the sizing. You could even adjust how many of these you go through. So all he has in here is a Mylar blanket. So this is just a survival blanket. I've said it a million times, hypothermia kills in trauma. So we wanna keep people warm even on hot days. Uh, your clotting processes start breaking down at about 95 degrees. So if it's under 95 degrees outside, you really wanna have one of these on your patients. Now into the pack, what you have on the inside here is you've got this orange backing. And I really like having a backing that's not the same color as the kit, not this brown or black, gray, just because that allows you to see your equipment a little bit more clearly. Now, obviously, if you're in like a super um, secretive location or you know, you're taking enemy fire or something, yeah, a bright color might alert your enemies, but that's not a realistic threat or fear in most cases, nothing that I've done at least. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. I like just being able to see my equipment. So coming in here a little bit more. Um, so we already have the cat tourniquet on the outside. That's your primary tourniquet. That's your TCCC uh, approved tourniquet. Um, you also have a SWAT T. Now, as far as your kind of off-label tourniquets, this is one of my favorites. It is not good for self-application. It's really hard to put on. Um, and it just takes a little bit of more cognitive thought to get it on somebody, which is why it's not TCCC approved. But the reason I like this over something, say the rats, is that it's really wide. So your occlusion pressures are lower. It doesn't cause as much pain putting it on the patient. And this can double as a pressure bandage. Um, it can be used to hold packing gauze in a junctional site. You name it, this is gonna work for it. Um, it also works for like lashing things. You know, it's a very multi-purpose tool and I really like that they uh, put it in here. Periodically, and I think it's like something like 20% of the time, a cat tourniquet, one cat tourniquet will not be effective for your patient and they recommend putting on a second one. So you can either carry a second one of these or I like carrying a backup like this just because it is multi-purpose. Uh, and we don't have a ton of room, so I like to save that space as much as possible. At the bottom, you saw me take it out. This is uh, Gecko Grip Tape. It's just really heavy duty tape. The uses for this are endless. Now, most of them are medical, but you know you can use this to repair gear, excuse me, um, or do any number of things. So I like having some tape in here. Now, I will say that this isn't the most compact form factor of tape. You know, I know there are a couple uh, tape brands out there where you can even take duct tape, put on a credit card. This takes up a little bit of space. If you're not going to alter this loadout at all, I think this tape is great. It fits fine. But if you wanted to add more in here or make the kit a little bit lighter, I'd say this is something that I'd lose or at least make this um, a little bit more compact by wrapping this around a credit card, something like that. Uh, in the middle, we've got some quick clot EMS rolled gauze. So this is packing gauze for junctional sites. Now, uh, quick clot or some kind of hemostatic agent is the gold standard for bleeding control. That being said, if you don't have this, it's not the end of the world. Um, really what's making a difference in these patients is the pressure against the artery. So getting it into the wound, packing the wound, getting it right up there, um, that's going to help a lot. I believe the only difference between this and like the military or LE versions you've seen is that this has a little bit less gauze in it. It's not, uh, it doesn't have the yardage of it. Um, so obviously that comes with some downsides, but I think this is plenty to pack a wound once or at least the common wounds that you're gonna see. On the left wing of this kit, we have the NAR compression gauze. I like carrying this stuff because this is like $2 uh, when you buy it. It's really easy to restock. You can use it as a wrap, as a compression dressing. You can also use it as packing gauze. And like I said, the difference between this and this in bleeding control is gonna be relatively minimal. So if this is all you can afford, this is all you have, I think this is a great option. And then I like having it as a secondary option. If I've used this on somebody, if I need to pack more in somebody's wound or they have multiple stab wounds, now I have kind of a backup to that. On the right side, the right wing, um, we have a nasopharyngeal airway. So this is a uh, 28 French, it's a seven millimeter uh, nasopharyngeal airway, standard adult size. Uh, carry one of these. I don't bother with OPAs anymore, really. Um, this is a great airway. It works excellent in a pinch and you can put it in somebody with a gag reflex or somebody without. And then it does come with a little bit of lubricant on that as well. Coming into the kit. Now, you will notice on either side, you've got these pockets. You could put more in it. Um, you could put some uh, needle decompression 
uh, stuff in there. You can put a scalpel, you know, whatever you want. This kit is not full to the brim, so you can customize it for your mission set, which I think is really, really important. In this main pocket, you have an Olay's or an Elias, however you like to pronounce it, uh, dressing. I did a review of these, I believe, a while back where I opened one up. Um, these dressings are really interesting. Uh, they do take up a little bit of space, but they're multi-purpose. So you've got a cup in here that allows you to apply direct pressure to a wound if you're uh, just doing it as a pressure bandage. Under that, you have a uh, piece of gauze that can be pulled out and you can use that to um, help increase pressure. You can pack a wound with it. And then you have a like sheet that you can lay as a makeshift um, chest seal. So if you don't have an occlusive dressing, you can use that too. So really multi-purpose and it fits in here perfectly. And last but not least in this kit, we've got the hyphen twin chest seals. I'll be honest, these are all I use um, because they're really compact. They come out really well. They're vented chest seals uh, and they come with two of them. So for an entrance and an exit wound. Like I said, there's a lot more room in this kit. So there's actually two pockets back here. You can fill it up. Um, I am a huge proponent of customizing your own stuff for what you're gonna use it for. If I was going for like a dirt bike ride or um, you know, general adventuring, and this was my only first aid kit, I'd probably throw some kind of boo-boo kit in it with some band-aids, ibuprofen, things like that. Um, for a like combat scenario, SWAT medic scenario, if I was mounting this on a plate carrier, I would actually probably remove some of the things. I'd streamline it just a little bit more. Um, you know, get this tape form factor down. Have, uh, you know, have actually, you know what? I'd have basically everything in here. So that's kind of the rundown on this kit. Uh, you know, overall, I really like it. It's a good form factor. This case uh, seems really good. I don't have any experience with the Maxpedition version of this, um, but I have no doubts that it is very functional and will work very well. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I do have an affiliate link on Medical Gear Outfitters. Uh, go through that if you're looking to pick up any medical supplies, it'll save you 10% and it will also help this channel out. So without further ado, I will see you next week.